You're watching The Daily Climate Show on Sky News. On today's programme... The Big Thaw, how rising temperatures are releasing millions of tonnes of carbon in Russia's Arctic. Parts of China are hit by the heaviest rain in a thousand years as extreme weather events continue to claim lives around the world. And the fossils discovered by a couple from Swindon, which could help teach us about the environment 167 million years ago. Hello and welcome to the UK's only daily climate news show, where we track the changes happening to our world right now and meet those coming up with the solutions. Permafrost, that's permanently frozen soil, lies beneath nearly a quarter of the Northern Hemisphere's landmass, and around 65% of Russian land sits on it. But temperatures in Russia are heating up two and a half times faster than the rest of the world. And as permafrost thaws, greenhouse gases are released, warming the planet further and melting the permafrost quicker. It's estimated that globally, permafrost holds around 1,400 gigatons of carbon, more than is already in the atmosphere. To understand the scale of that, one gigaton is a billion tons of carbon. For people who live in the region, the effects of these dramatic changes are already being felt. Diana Magne reports from Chersky, deep in the Russian Arctic. It is hard to imagine in summer what it takes to survive minus 55 in winter here, near Chersky in the Russian Arctic. But temperatures here are warming fast, twice to three times the global average. And as they do, the permafrost, or permanently frozen soil not far below ground, is thawing causing massive soil erosion along the Arctic's shores and coastlines and releasing powerful greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Nikita Zimov and his father, Sergei, have made it their life's work to raise the alarm over thawing permafrost. When I was a kid, temperature of permafrost, temperature of ground, this ground on average, was minus six centigrade. Now it's minus three and even warmer. And in the warm years, it's going almost close to zero. And I think in the next few decades, two, three decades at most, I think majority of permafrost here in the Arctic will start to degrade. It's already driven a rush in mammoth tusk ivory as soil erosion reveals the permafrost's treasures. That's a big bone of some, leg bone of some uh, mammoth. Of a mammoth? Yeah. How do you know? The size. So only mammoths could have such bone. Woolly rhinoceros, it's a bit different. They're also big bones, but this one is big. That's quite a little part of one very big leg bone. Wow. But the permafrost also contains hundreds of billions of tons of carbon, which is slowly being released. Ah. That's a pure ice. 50% of the sediments is not carbon, it's ice. And ice is melting rapidly. Ice is mixing with these sediments and turning them into mud and all this slide down. Ice is causing ground depressions. And that's something that's why this permafrost is dangerous. Not only about carbon. Carbon, which is 40 meters below, who cares? It will thaw for millennia and millennia and millennia. Ice will ma make it melt much, much faster. To show you what the carbon consists of, we're inside a permafrost cave. They were used a lot for storage here in the Arctic, especially by fishermen. These roots are essentially plants that were frozen in the soil at the time when the mammoths were roaming the grasslands up above. But as this stuff thaws, this decomposes and greenhouse gases are emitted into the atmosphere, methane and CO2, and that warms up the planet further. The more permafrost degrades, the more buildings will end up looking like this. The Arctic's rusting Soviet infrastructure collapsing as the ground gives way. Expected to cost Russia 50 billion pounds, a quarter of the federal budget, by 2050. Yes, do you see? For a long time, Sergei Zimov was a lone voice on the dangers of permafrost thaw and the methane he noticed daily bubbling up from below ground. Methane? Grow so fast last year. It was most fast growth in all history. 
I feel it's because our permafrost start to melt. And any pond now produce methane. And we have millions of ponds like this around my house. The Zimovs have a solution. Return the Arctic to how it was during the mammoth era. Bring back the millions of animals which used to roam here to scrape away and trample down the insulating layer of snow when they forage for food, which counterintuitively traps in the heat and stops the cold from penetrating. It seems fanciful, not least because of the scale that it would require. Yes, you know, crazy scientists from Russia want to bring what? Millions of animals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. tell me answer. But if you have better solution, give me one. As we travel back, a distant Arctic wildfire turns the sun the color of Mars and lends a haze to the horizon. These fires now raging through Siberia send more carbon into the atmosphere and warm the permafrost further, a vicious feedback loop which compounds the crisis in our climate. Dynamagne Sky News in the Russian Arctic. In today's other climate news, New York City has registered the worst air quality in the world as cities in the United States have been covered in smoke from wildfires in the west of the country. Washington, Philadelphia and Toronto have also been affected, with the smoke causing hazy skies and giving the moon a red tinge. More than 80 wildfires in the western US have burned across nearly 1.3 million acres of drought-affected land. Scientists are warning that extreme floods in Europe could become much more frequent as a result of global warming. A new study suggests slow-moving storms could become 14 times more common over land by the end of the century. Slow-moving storms cause intense rainfall over a small area, which increases the risk of serious flooding. They can have devastating impacts, as we've seen last week in Germany and Belgium. A new study has found men cause more greenhouse gas emissions than women. That's right. Scientists compared single men and women in Sweden and found men are responsible for 16% more emissions, despite spending similar amounts of money. So why might that be? That's right, cars. The biggest difference was the amount men spend on petrol and diesel. And Prince William is writing an introduction to a new book to support his environmental award, the Earthshot Prize. The book, called Earthshot, How to Save Our Planet, will highlight the environmental challenges facing the world and showcase some of the solutions already underway. It will also feature contributions from members of the Earthshot Prize Council, including Sir David Attenborough. There's been severe flooding in parts of China's Henan province, with a year's worth of rain falling in just three days. Thousands have been forced to leave their homes and the public transport system has been overwhelmed by water. And while floods are common during the country's rainy season, they are getting more frequent and intense due to the rapid urbanisation and global warming. A correspondent, Tom Cheshire, reports from Beijing. People were making their way back home after work when the water burst in. It happened so fast that the trains were still running. Inside the carriages, commuters were trapped. And what started as an inconvenience quickly became the stuff of nightmares. The train stopped, the water rising, up to their necks. And nothing they could do but wait and hope. Graphic videos on Chinese social media showed apparently lifeless bodies in the carriages and on the station platforms. After wildfires in the US, catastrophic flooding in Europe, it is now China's turn, as the climate crisis bites. Hunan province is home to nearly 100 million people. It has been hit by heavy rains since the weekend. But nearly a year's worth fell in just one day on the provincial capital of Zhengzhou yesterday. Local weather forecasters said it was the heaviest rainfall in a thousand years. Across the city, dozens of vehicles were swept away. A huge rescue operation was launched. In some cases, it came down to life and death moments like this. This woman only just saved from the deluge. Experts have long warned that climate change would make floods like this more severe. No country pollutes more than China. But no other country is in a position to make more of a positive impact on the climate crisis by reducing emissions. The US climate envoy, John Kerry, yesterday called on China to do more. It should not need that encouragement. The devastation in Zhengzhou is enough proof of the need to act.
Tom Cheshire, Sky News, Beijing. Now, the government would say it has plenty of policies to try and reduce emissions, but many argue more will need to be done to reach net zero by 2050 and slow global warming. Now, one of the ideas often mentioned is a carbon border adjustment, essentially taxing goods that are imported into the country that have a high climate impact. And that could be a step closer to being introduced in the UK, as our economics and data editor, Ed Conway, explains. Now, a carbon border adjustment has long been one of those things academics have talked about, but it hasn't seemed very real. But it might be about to become something that's very tangible indeed and affect all of us. It's worth just going through what it is, first of all. It sounds complicated, but actually it's quite simple. And if you just look at this line, this white line shows you UK carbon emissions. And look, it looks like they're on the way down, doesn't it? But here's the thing. Our total carbon footprint, the black line, is actually a lot higher. Why? Because of all the carbon intensive goods we're importing from places like Asia, Europe and elsewhere. So while domestic producers, the white line, have to pay green levies, obey green regulations, foreign producers sometimes don't. And that is where a carbon border adjustment comes in, making them pay the equivalent costs when their goods pass the UK border. So a very big deal. I'm here in Glasgow with the Secretary of State for Trade, Liz Truss. I asked her about whether the UK was considering a carbon border adjustment. After all, the EU and the US are talking about it in detail. Here's what she said about it. It is certainly something that we will need to look at in the future if it's the case that we don't have the net zero targets agreed across the board and if it's the case that we can't get agreement at the World Trade Organization. But we do have time to look at this because the carbon leakage issue isn't biting at the moment. So the, the right approach is to analyze the evidence and have those multilateral discussions at this stage. So that was Liz Truss signalling that while it's early days, while she hopes for a, a multilateral solution, it may well be that the UK might have to introduce some of these taxes with big consequences for all of us. And finally, a couple from Swindon have discovered one of the UK's largest collections of rare marine fossils after stumbling across the site on Google Earth. Neville and Sally Hollingworth noticed the quarry in Wiltshire while researching the geology of the area online. Hundreds of samples from 174 to 164 million years ago have now been collected, which will allow researchers to understand how our climate has changed over time. Well, that's all from us for today. Tomorrow, more from our Moscow correspondent, Diana Magne, on the wildfires ripping through Siberia. For now, thanks for watching and we'll see you then.